Welcome back to another video, you guys, from here in Malaysia, from our breeding facility. Today I'm going to give you guys a look at our Boiga, most of our Boiga species that we have here. They are juvenile, small adults, and adults, and at the end of the video I'm going to give you guys a surprise. I think you're going to really like it. We're going to start with some non-natives first. This is Diversions. This is the blue Philippine mangrove snake. This is one of the snakes that is kind of like the, this is the high, high-end Boiga that everybody's really after. They are very expensive, but they are amazing animals. We have found them to be pretty prolific, not difficult to breed, and I am told that the babies are not difficult to start. Now, I have worked with a number of babies, and I didn't find the babies difficult, but I haven't hatched any babies, but I'm told that I shouldn't have any issues. Now these are two years old now, I believe, and they're just really starting to get some size. This is a male diversions, and the males usually are more colorful between the two male and males and females. The females sometimes get very muted, and I'll show you a female here in a moment. Now I have a pair of diversions in the US. I have already bred them, and I have eggs in my incubator, but here in Malaysia, I don't have any big enough to breed, but it's coming. And believe it or not, Boiga will breed at a pretty small size. They're very, very prolific overall in general. And so we're gonna be giving these, a, these guys a try next year for sure. So I have another male that is the same size. I'll show you that one next, but it's in shed. But it's still nice. <laughs> So this is another male. He's deep in shed and he is very angry. <laughs> I don't want to stress him out too much. I know if I had a ponytail and I could really antagonize this animal, I'd get a lot of views, but we're not going to do that today. I just wanted to show you a little bit. You can see the lots of blue. It's a beautiful snake. But that is it for this guy. The show is over. I don't like to stress my animals out but I'm just doing this just to give you guys a look at how blue these animals are. Even deep in shed, you can see this animal is amazing. It's grown a lot since we last been here and it hasn't been so long, only about three or four months. So this is a female and like I said, she's very muted. She's not in shed. She was sold to me as an exanthic, but I'm not sure now. She does still look kind of weird to me, but also the females have this muted pattern and color a lot of the time. Not all, not all the time, but a lot of the time, this for some reason is kind of normal for these guys. She is still very, very pretty in her own right. And yeah, pretty cool. And not quite as angry as the other one. Although I'm sure I could get her there if I really tried, but we're not all about that. So this is a different subspecies, you guys. This is La Defasiata, also from the Philippines. It's a little bit more typical of your average mangrove snake, but there is a lot of black tipping, a lot of black edges in the yellow scales, and I just love these. They are one of my favorites. I love the head pattern. The labials are, it's just very interesting. It's very bold and contrasty, and I'm, I really like these, these are one of my favorites. Even without the blue, I mean, I like the diversions as well. Blue is beautiful and striking, but I also like these a lot. This one is a male. It is a breedable size male, although it is small and it is young. And I'm sending, I have two adult females in the US that I'll be sending over here this summer. And I have one female here that I'm going to show you and then I'm going to tell you a little story that happened yesterday is kind of interesting. So here, this is our female Lada Fasciata and yesterday I had her out just for general inspection and I for some reason just thought I would palpate and just check for follicles just for the hell of it and she had four follicles. I put her with the male, we went lights out for like an hour and they were locked. So. I actually feel pretty confident that there's gonna be four eggs from this female 
For those of you that watch the channel and kind of follow along with our diversions project, almost the exact same thing happened with the diversions in the US in December. And I have six eggs in the incubator now and that worked out. So this is kind of the same thing. These snakes, Boiga in general, they are super prolific and they breed at smaller sizes and younger ages. And I think this is going to be a prime example. I might be eating my words if the eggs are infertile, but she did get bred and she is cycling uh, without us having to do anything. Just, that just happened on her own. So I just happened to discover it, I think right in the critical moment and, um, and she got bred. So pretty cool stuff, pretty exciting. And again, two adult females in the US coming over and I forgot I have a, a yearling male also in the US that's also going to be coming over. So that's going to be 2.3 that will be breedable like once they get here. So pretty excited about that. La de Faciata. So here's one nigriceps. I just wanted to show you a really nice specimen. This one is super angry. It's a female. She has a little bit of a stub tail here, but her color makes up for that. She is really angry today. I don't know why. She usually was not like this or hasn't been like this, but her color is amazing. The nigriceps babies start out completely orange or pink color. They do not have the green heads like the baby Cyanea. And the really nice high quality ones like this will just retain their color all the way into adulthood. Here in Malaysia, they do come in a dark kind of like a, a, a green, very forest, dark forest green color, almost to the point where it looks like a hybrid between Cyanea and Nigriceps. But this one is a really nice one. <laughs> so it also has been here in quarantine, but we are still waiting for our glass cages. So I think we're just gonna leave it where it's at. But this is a really, really nice one. Nice looking one, not a nice acting one. This one's angry. <laughs> So we're gonna move on now to Boiga Synodon, you guys. I'm gonna start with Philippine locality, Boiga Synodon. Now they look quite different from the ones that occur in Thailand and also here in Malaysia. They just have a little bit of a different color scheme. The banding is a bit different. If you've seen a lot of these, you would be able to see the difference right away, but just very, very different looking. This one is starting to inflate its throat a little bit. That's just a uh, kind of a defensive behavior. Synodon are usually pretty cool, but every once in a while I come across one that's a little feisty. And I think we do have a couple feisty ones here in the facility, but I'm gonna show you all of them. They're getting bigger, starting to grow, almost getting up to breeding size. Okay, let me show you another one. So here's another one. This is Philippine locality, deep in shed, but you can see that the pattern is a little bit aberrant, which seems normal for these locality. It's kind of different, but out of shed, you can see that the color is, is quite unique. Typical for Philippine locality, but very different from the ones that occur here in this part of the world. So this is a larger adult Boiga Synodon from here in Malaysia. As you can see, they do get rather long, but they stay very thin. They're very lightweight, very, very arboreal, and they love to eat birds and eggs. And we feed these guys both. They get bigger than this. This one is not fully grown, but uh, there's a bit of variation among them here, especially here in Malaysia to the north. 
and in the south of Thailand also, because of course the animals don't recognize the borders on a map, but there are some very interesting ones and we're gonna to get to that next. And here is a super cool one. We showed these ones in the previous video that we did from here. This is a melanistic Boiga synodon from here in Malaysia. This is one of my favorite snakes. It is so cool. I love the little gold, kind of gold dust in the, in the pattern. It's just an amazing animal. So here's another one, you guys. This is the female. The one that I showed you previous was a male. So we've had these in quarantine already for November, December, January, about four months they've been in quarantine. So we're moving these animals out of quarantine. We're gonna move them into the main room today and that's why I'm standing here in the main room and showing these to you. They've been doing really well, they've been treated, they're feeding really well, and they're fully acclimated and everything is great. So here's a really interesting one with a little bit of a backstory. I originally bought two of these patternless as Boiga Synodon from a breeder in Russia. And so I had two females, it was supposed to be 0.2. And so we've had them here, we've been raising them up, they're pretty decent eaters, they're growing, they're doing well. I've shown them before on the channel. I've been doing some research and I started getting convinced that these are actually Boiga Filipina. I don't think these are Boiga Synodon. They don't seem like they're growing and attaining the same size as Synodon and they really are a visual match to Boiga Filipina. Now, having 0.2 of those is quite a problem because Russia is at war. They are not able to export from the breeder there. And finding these is just super, super difficult. Finding a lone male, I have no idea where I could find one. So I'll show you the other one in a second, but I just probed these animals and this particular one probed male and the other one probed female. So I'm really excited. Sometimes you guys, things work out. So we have 1.1, if I'm correct, Boiga Filipina. And so this is actually really, really rare. And so we have a pair in our collection. I'm super excited about it. Uh, it's kind of like, uh, when you find out something may not be what it was represented as, and then you sex it and it's not the way that they were sexed, but in this whole scenario, I think we're super lucky. I think it just totally worked out. So anyway, this is the male and it all goes to figure because the other one is not growing at this rate. It's smaller than this animal and male Boiga are bigger than females. So it just all makes sense to me. But confirmed probe, this one is a male. And this is the other one probed female from the same breeder in Russia. So again, I believe we lucked out Boiga Filipina. That is about the happiest I've ever been probing animals <laughs> because for me, it usually works out to be all males all the time here at DM Exotics, but I think we did rather well. So. If any of you have any knowledge of this uh, species, Boiga Filipina, put it in the comments below. Please let me know what you think. I've done as much research as I could online and I think that's what's going on. So, super stoked. This is the surprise I was telling you about that I saved for the end of the video. This is a female black Boiga Synodon, a melanistic Boiga Synodon, a really big female. She's really good size. She is in amazing condition and she is already set up here in our quarantine facility. And there's another little surprise. She got bread and she laid eggs. So 
I filmed the eggs. I'm going to cut to that right now. Okay, so here's the black Cynodon eggs. We have them set up in this manner here. And it looks like the, we have a total of 10 eggs. One egg is set off to the side. Slightly questionable, but I think we might be okay with all 10. But I think for sure nine eggs are viable. And yeah, super exciting stuff. I can't wait to see how this one ends up. So needless to say, I am super excited. I don't know what's going to happen with those eggs. Hopefully they do hatch. They will not hatch in time to make our June export, but probably it's safer for us to hold those babies here anyway for the following year between June 2023 and June 2024. So we'll decide what's going on. We'll have an entire year to decide. We don't know if the babies hatch out with extra black if they hatch out normal and turn black later we actually have no idea what to expect but regardless huge head start we're way ahead of the game and we still have this beautiful trio so she's getting ready to take a goodbye whack at me so i'm going to put her back in her cage we are in the quarantine room here she's going to still continue to reside in here until we get our glass cages so if i can get her back into her cage that will be very nice and there you go awesome so there you go you guys that was my surprise a wonderful way to cap the video and that is it for our boiga video thank you so much for watching we will see you in the next one this is a lot of fun <laughs> take care you guys <laughs>